Zavis opri plitije kjah. E, te zugrozim. Rade, Petri. Te super zugrozim. Sve gotovo, boss. Zukripljeno do vožnje. I per možnje recijeti. Cosmos. Asli! Is Planitia, we should deploy her now. Is it dust storm still active? Yes, sir. And it seems to be intensifying. If we don't release her now, we'll have to choose another landing site. Should we abort the deployment? No, no. Let's do it now. visual contact with the lander. The dust storm appears to be more severe than we expected. Do we still have radio contact? Affirmative. What's the altitude? 35 kilometers in closing. Buggers! Thank you. 
status. She should be on the surface. Should be getting something now. Negative, sir. I, I think she's lost. Charlie, what are you doing with the tailor? You're leaving in the morning. You haven't met the crew yet. All right, give me one second, Chef. It's a jumpsuit. One size fits all. Good enough for all Armstrong, Commonil, and good enough for you. Now, how would you know, Chef? You ever worn a onesie? An Air Force captain, boy. Of course, I've worn a onesie. All right, then you know what I'm talking about. These things aren't flattering, man. You got 10 minutes, Liberace. Tailor man. No rhinestones, no fringe, nothing fancy. Just get her done. That's fine. Just a couple of things. It'll be tasteful. Cool. Kind of Star Trek. Dang it. Yeah. Listen, Charlie. This just came down from the top. The mission has taken on a whole new responsibility I'm wondering if I can trust you with. No, I can't do it, man. I'm too busy. I got yoga, I got poker. It's just, that's no, not gonna happen. Quit mocking the mission, Charlie. Shep, that's why I love you, man. You got a great sense of humor. Come on, you know you can count on me. Okay, send him on in. Charlie Brownsville, I'd like to introduce you to Jackson and Jewel, co-host of the most popular talk show in the NASA Space Channel. You might say it's an exclusive deal, Charlie Brownsville. We get an exclusive interview every night, and you get enough money to beat the European Union to Mars. What are you kidding? You're talking about the ESA? Like they're really competition? Come on, am I the only one here who remembers the Mars Express? Let's face it, guys. I mean, the Europeans haven't really landed anything successfully in a new world since, like, you know, they discovered America. I don't think that's entirely fair. They're amateurs. And that whole, like, crackpot scavenger hunt for the Beagle 2, I mean, it's ridiculous. They nearly euthanized the whole Mars program, right? I mean, the Redcoats are just not in the same league, right? What? Charlie, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Casey Cook. It's, uh... <laughs> Very nice to meet you. To what do I owe the pleasure of your acquaintance? Oh, I'm the crackpot that almost killed the Mars program. Yeah, and to top it all off, she's the third member of your crew. This time, the red coats are coming with us. Doctor, I'd like to introduce you to the ship's captain. We are sorry we didn't brief you any sooner, but hey, we are the White House. Now! Without further delay, let me give you the best dressed man in American politics. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. For the last 20 years, we've been sending little robots up to Mars. And for two decades, we've been getting pictures of little rocks. At least the Europeans tried to find something when they sent that can opener up in Op 3. Granted, they lost it in a dust storm on Christmas I Day. I don't wish to be disrespectful, sir, but... So far, you haven't told us anything new. You'll learn something new when I'm ready for you to learn something new. Of course, Mr. President. Dr. Cook didn't find their lander, but she did find something else. Mr. President, it sounds like you're telling us that uh, Dr. Cook's findings support the claim that there is life on Mars. No, kid. You recklessly jumped to that conclusion all by your lonesome. But if that is the case, why didn't any of the US rover missions discover signs of it? I don't know. I don't care. It's water under the bridge now. When does NASA plan on landing another rover near the Isitis Planetarium? We don't know. Now, like I said before, sit down and let me get to the point. The space race is on again, and I never lose a race. Ever. <laughs> Did I have a headset or something? 
Boosters Check. are online. Check. All within normal parameters. Check. How's it going? I'm Charlie. We, I'm an astronaut. We met yesterday. I Check. still know who you are. Cabin pressurized. Exterior doors locked. You know, I know we met yesterday, but I think we got and off on the wrong blinking foot. sensor on 4B. Satellite in range. Rendezvous control that, with ion that engine set. Come on, let's be homies. Ion sales are now online. Free countdown initiated. Synchronized. Do over. You like do overs? Just shake his hand so we can focus on the launch. My name is Dr. Casey Kirk. I'm an even better astronaut than you are. Oh, that was great. Radiation shield secure. I'm initiating pre burn. Are you two ready? Uh, I guess so. I'm, am I supposed to be doing something? No, it actually only takes two people to launch the ship. Okay, why am I here? Redundancy? Space is a dangerous place, Charlie. If something should happen to Dr. Cook, or myself, which is entirely possible, that's when you take over. So sit back and uh, look pretty. Don't touch anything. try to outdo us. Sort of. Basically, they're sending another robot to look for life up there on Mars. Personally, the only critters I expect they're going to find up there are a couple of NASA's finest. But I'm open-minded. So let's go to the live feed from Joshua Tree, California. Allison, can you hear us okay? Good morning, Mr. President. Now, I know you're a busy woman, so I'll be brief. Can you tell us what you're about to send into space? Well, the problem with landing on another planet is that it's really far away and totally foreign. We never know what to expect. So, we need machines to make decisions. And that's what art is. Autonomous rover technology. He gathers information, analyzes it, and then decides what other information he needs. And the best part about it is, art does it all on his own. And if he loses contact with mission control, this little boy for Are you telling us this go-kart is alive? No, absolutely not. This is still just a machine. Artificial intelligence is not alive. It simply just makes decisions. It's self-sufficient. It doesn't feel emotion or fall in love or even bloom like a flower. It simply does what it is told. All right, Doc. Thanks for your time. Now listen carefully. Even though that robot is going to get to Mars before our astronauts, I'm not worried. After all, that robot is just as American as Pocahontas, or Burt Reynolds, or French fries, or tater tots. Any which way, it's going to be one of us up there, poking around. Well, Jewel, that never gets old. Come on, Charlie. What everyone down here on Earth wants to know is what kind of amazing things are you seeing out there? Supernovas, comets, UFOs? Well, Jackson, I gotta tell you, I've been looking out that window there for the last two weeks, and I have not seen anything new so far. I mean, there's a lot of stars, you know, more than we see from Earth, obviously. But I don't know, man, there's, uh, there's a certain coldness to it. It's very distant, and nothing changes. It's just an overwhelming darkness and stars and stillness. Stillness? That's a funny way to describe traveling through space at 57,000 miles per hour. <laughs> well, I guess it's all a perspective thing, you know. Still, it'd be pretty neat to see a meteor or something out there, you know? <laughs> okay. Well, that's all the time we have for now. So, Charlie, we'll talk to you in another 750,000 miles. Good night from Mother Earth. Oh. Emptiness, stars, and nothingness, that's the best you can do? So I was trying to be poetic, all right? Yeah, if NASA wanted pros about space travel, we would have 
gotten that Lake Wobegon guy up there to compare the boredom of space travel with the Minnesota cornfield. At least he would have been funny about it. Well, sort of funny. NASA doesn't want poetry up there. They want John Wayne taming the new frontier. Look, I never said I was a cowboy, Chef, all right? I'm doing my best. Don't kid yourself, Charlie. I know exactly what you're not. Even so, you were the best expendable we had on short notice. What do you mean, expendable? You've trained in spacewalks. In case you haven't noticed, NASA's not doing a spacewalk anymore, son. Great, so I'm redundant and expendable? Yeah, and apparently boring, too. So if you don't get your ratings up damn quick, you're gonna take the whole Mars program out of its misery. What do you expect me to do, Shep? I expect you to let me down again. But I'm hoping when you do, it's gonna make for some great TV. What's with all those rhinestones? I thought we talked about that. Shep, they're not rhinestones, all right? It's embroidery. It looks good. We don't want Flash Gordon in nudie suit, son. Don't make me put you on report. will be going on for a few more days. So will the rain effect. Um, close your eyes. Listen really hard. Maybe you can hear them. Да. Да. Заглузим. Следую с ракетом. and seems to cover most of the area that the beagle was thought to be lost in. Could this be the same phenomenon that Dr. Cook has been observing? If it is, then there's a lot more of it now. I'm so excited. This is exactly what art was made to do. That is Olympus Mon. We'll be landing 10 kilometers from its base. Well, this part still makes me feel like a rock star. <laughs> to the boy. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Jules. 
and I'm Jackson. And we are here to bring you all the latest from outer space. Everyone's favorite space hunk, Charlie Brownsville, is going to be joining us in a few minutes. But first, let's take a look at something a little closer to home. A week ago, most of us Earthlings had all but forgotten about our brave astronauts out there in space. It was cool seeing them take off, and the sheer danger of their trip was momentarily spellbinding. But if you're anything like me, you've gotten tired of those dry reports. Well, leave it to Las Vegas to pull that mission out of reruns and doldrums. Now everyday people can be part of the mission by betting on its success. The odds makers put a successful landing at an even one to one. A successful return pays even better at four to one. And odds of finding life, 15 to one. Well, the odds of that life being intelligent are a long shot, 200 to one right now. You know what I would love? Just some cheese, or like an enchilada, or a piece of pizza or something. Yeah, I didn't think I'd miss anything, but I didn't miss beer. You realize if something happens up here, the last meal we're gonna have is fresh greens and a protein shake. And you know how I know this? Every meal up here is fresh greens and a protein shake. We're not gonna die up here. Well, if something does happen, we can crack open that bottle of champagne we brought up here. That's true. Before we cash in. Speaking of cashing in, I heard from Jackson and Jewel. They have open betting odds on the mission in Vegas. Makes sense. Well, why? What are they betting on? Uh, all kinds of stuff, like you know, when we're gonna get there, if there's actual Martian life, uh, if there's liquid water, which one of us will die first. That's disgusting. I mean, they should be worried about us. This is a dangerous mission. It, uh, what kind of deviant bets on one of us dying out here? Can you bet on us separately? Like, uh, are the odds of me dying different from, say, the odds of one of you two dying? Who cares, Hank? Well, actually, you can. Um, I think since you two are going down to the surface, your risk assessment is a little higher than mine. So according to the bookies, I have like a three to one chance of outliving you guys. Mm, must be nice for you. Comforting? Not really. It really just makes me remember how pointless I am on this mission. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I don't listen to him. You're not totally pointless, Charlie, okay? I mean, let's see. You're like our valet. When we go down to the service, you're like our valet. Ooh, valet. Ooh. Yeah, there's some pretty cool valets out there, you know. Tips. Yeah. Or you could think of yourself as like the getaway driver, mm. you know. Like, without you up here, we stay down there forever. Besides, someone has to do those interviews with a cable channel. I mean, if they wanted a televised mission, they should have just faked it like the moon landings. Hank, they didn't fake the moon landings. Oh, no? No. Well... I think Kubrick and Armstrong took their secrets to the grave. What is going on? The trajectory is all wrong. The lander is in orbit, but it isn't headed towards a predetermined landing site. Where is it headed? Let me see. It's about 20 degrees off. That makes it... It's headed towards Acidus Planitia. <laughs> what are you talking about? It says so right here. Look at these records. Watch. Compare it to the map. Why? Why there? Art was no. programmed to prioritize survival. He must have seen something in the data that you all missed. Miss Guthrie. I have a bad feeling about this. He's trying to land in the same damn corner of Mars that we lost the Beagle in. Now, is there any way we can alter his course? We can try, but I urge you to trust the machine. Nice sentiment, but I'm not losing another lander. Like it or not, it's too late to revert to the original site. The lander is already too close to the planet. Besides, we have a bigger problem. It's the communication relay on the lander. The new course is bringing it in at a steeper angle, so it's heating up more than anticipated.
incoming transmission. It's from the lander. He made it. We'll put, put it up on the screen. Transmission. These CO2 readings can't be right. They're much higher than we expected. Is this some sort of a prank? No, sir. The feed is uh, coming directly from the lander. That's my boy. He knew where he was going all along. Well, I never doubted him for a moment. <laughs> Good, sir. The relay just failed. That's not what I heard. They told me you wanted bacon on it again. Well, it was a stressful day. The bacon helps me calm down. Why not tofurkey? Or tempeh bacon? I think we found life on Mars. <laughs> Big deal. Everybody already expected that. No, they didn't. Sure they did. They have been conditioning us through TV and movies about that for years. So when they tell us there's life on Mars, it won't offend our religious and moral sensibilities. Who the hell is they? You know, they, they. The people in power, the ones that make decisions about stuff like that. I am the people in power. I'm the one who makes those <laughs> kinds of decisions. Oh, yeah? Then how come you didn't know about all this life on Mars stuff, huh? They probably told Jimmy Carter when he was president. Well, at least I'm the president who gets to announce it to the world. That's kind of sexy, right? Kinda. <laughs> Afternoon. Yes, Hank, it's afternoon somewhere. Now quit being clever. Let me do the talking. The European lander with Art on board made it up to Mars last week. That's fantastic. Why didn't you tell us Captain, sooner? Stop. The information I'm about to give you is on an NTK basis. <sighs> NTK. What does that mean? NTK. Need to know. It's all classified. If I hadn't bribed that plebe at the ESA, I wouldn't even have these pictures. I don't know what pictures you're talking about. I told you, Hank, today I'm going to be asking the questions, and you just do the listening. I, I don't remember you telling me that. Sounds like I just did. The ESA is uh, experiencing a bit of DJ vu. They lost another lander there on Mars. Wait a minute, I, uh, I thought you just said it made it. Yeah, funny, that sounded like uh, another question to me, Hank. Okay, no more questions, Shep. It did make it to Mars. Unfortunately, the communications relay failed almost immediately. However, just prior to said failing, sent back eight images. Uh, I, Shep, I, uh, I actually have one more question. Um, what's that? Yeah, I don't know. But if it's what I think it is, you're gonna be a rich man again, Hank. Shep, you know that's not why I'm out here. Fine. I understand, son. Whatever. But if that smudge is E.T., it's imperative you and Dr. Cook make first contact. That's still a big deal back here on Earth. We don't want the word of this leaked out, Hank, until we're sure. And, uh... Who would I tell up here? Jewel, Jackson. I don't talk to them. Well, change the landing coordinates to 270 degrees by 30 degrees, and then just tell Charlie and Dr. Cook it's because of bad weather. Are you asking me to lie to my crew? No, 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 no. no. I am ordering you to. <sighs> you know, I'm kind of jealous of you two. What? That's crazy. I'm serious, man. Hank is an amazing pilot. You seen the way he flies this thing? I could probably do it, but the guy is on it. You could do it if you tried. And you, you're like a, 
scientist astronaut. I mean, the rest of us are just monkey button pushers. Charlie, you shouldn't be so down on yourself. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could do both our jobs, but hey, neither of us are trained to do your speciality. A big whoop. Spacewalking. You know, Slouch, aren't you the hotshot that crawled out and fixed the ion propulsion satellite in 2010? That was you? Yeah, that was me. That was him, making you the only astronaut in the last 25 years to perform an untethered extravehicular activity. See? That's pretty impressive right there. Yeah, it was impressive five years ago, but now I'm expendable. Look, you're not expendable. If you're expendable, we all are. And I don't think NASA paid $3 billion for an expendable mission. Oh, think about it. Think about your precious Beagle, too. Was that expendable? No. Well, even if she hadn't been lost, did you guys have a plan to bring her back? No, well, it was a one-way trip. Expendable. Hank, would you back me up on this, please? We're not expendable. Sorry, Casey, but... My natural bent's toward conspiracy and distrust of authority. But you know what? Right now it doesn't matter. I wasn't hurting your feet, was I? <sighs> no, it's fine. Because right now we have a job to do. I'm gonna have to ask you to help me change course. And since we're moving at about 50,000 miles per hour, it's gonna be a little tricky. We're gonna have to adjust all three ion sails and reprogram the lander. Sounds pretty complicated. You guys should probably just get to it. I'm gonna go, uh... Hang out. Sorry, Charlie, but I'm gonna need both of you for this. If we don't adjust all three sails at the exact same time, the ion stream we're riding could send us somewhere we don't want to go. Did you just ask me to help you fly this thing? No, Charlie, I'm not asking. I'm ordering. That's what captains do. Now go suit up. Don't let it go to your head. <laughs> Adjust your sails 0 0.025 degrees clockwise. Doesn't sound too bad. So why are we doing this? Orders for mission control. Shep's concerned about the weather at the initial landing site, so he's moving us closer to the Isidus Planitia. I need you both to activate your manual controls. The blue lever on your right. Pull it down like this. The weather is just as bad there as anywhere else on the planet. Why would we fly into it? I don't know. I just do what I'm told. Now turn the wheels. Final positions in three, two, one. That's it? At 50,000 miles per hour, that's all it takes. I don't mean to be a killjoy, but has anyone mapped the new debris belts we'll be crossing on our new trajectory? Not yet. Wow. You're the captain? Yeah, I am the captain. But I've studied that part of the planet for years, and I think it's a bad choice for the landing. Noted, Dr. Cook. All right, guys, easy, chill out. Come on, let's celebrate. I'm finally useful for once. Well, I'm going to the hydroponics lab, make sure everything made it through okay. And Charlie, I was thinking of going for a swim while I was in there. Would you join me? You want me to join you for a swim? Yeah, for a swim in space. Okay. Uh, just a minute. Uh, Casey, you go on ahead. I'd like to have a quick word with Charlie. Casey, be right there. Don't mention the change in course to the press. I'm asking you. Keep this under wraps for now. Killing me, Hank. First time in space, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I figured I'd set the bar high. Definitely. I've actually been up here a bunch. I've been an astronaut for a while, and I was actually kind of famous for a little while. And uh, I think that's why, I don't know, it got to my head, and sometimes I say some stupid stuff. Um, you don't mean the whole custom tailored jumpsuit thing you got going on? I think you're secretly obsessed with the jumpsuit, <laughs> is why. Yeah. No, but seriously, I. I shouldn't have ridiculed you over the Mars Explorer. I was just showing off and got nervous and it was stupid, so sorry. Thank you, Charlie. I appreciate it. 
know what? I'm done talking about jumpsuits and let's go for a swim. Whoa, okay. I did not just see a uh, amazing red swimsuit that's cute. What? This, this whole thing? It's, it's my Martian bikini. Pretty nice, huh? It's no jumpsuit, but it'll do. Oh. Thanks. Problem. What's your little problem? I don't have a swimsuit. Wow. You had no intention of swimming with me, did you? No, it's not like that. You said come swimming, and I was like, I thought you were like making a joke because it's our water source. I didn't know we could swim in it. I thought we were just gonna like hang out, and I, I want to hang out. I, I just, just I, I thought it'd be fun and a, a good way for us to make up, you know. But I mean, it's not the same if you don't swim too. So just. Get it. No, it's <sighs> Spend all that time and money to send a rusty piece of junk to a distant dead world. So, you don't have any curiosity about it? <laughs> no. Don't listen to him, Casey. Wonder's healthy. It moves us forward, and it gives us a reason to work together. I wish it was that simple. Well, maybe it can be. <laughs> Outside. Have you seen this thing? <laughs> Only about a hundred times since I got up this morning. It's incredible. <sighs> I actually thought it would be a little more impressive. Not uh, what you expected, huh? It kind of just looks like a red version of the moon. Come on, Hank, get cleaned up. Today, Charlie's not the only one who's going to be on TV. She's right, Hank. They're gonna want to see you, too. Oh, yeah? We should give them something to see. We're gonna need your sewing machine. Why don't you go run and get it? So, Charlie, today's the big day. You bet it is, Jewel. I have to admit, most days I was hoping for something a little bit more exciting, or at least some indication that you guys were actually doing something, but today makes it feel almost worth it. Well, thank you. I think. We're gonna pull in Dr. Casey Cook and Hank Morrison. Casey, Hank, say hi to America. Beautiful, huh? Don't pull that on us, Charlie. Allow us like a little practical joke. Come on, we're going stir crazy up here. I'll have Hank patch you through the real thing. Sorry, guys. There you have it, folks. The two moons over Mars. Beautiful, huh? Truly amazing to know you're actually looking out and seeing that. Unreal. You want unreal? You wait till tomorrow when Hank and Casey land on that sucker. That's unreal. What are you, what are you doing? I thought we were mooning. We did. Put him on. Mr. President. Mr. President. How does
does this compare to the Apollo moon landings? Let me answer your question with another question. How does a trip to your neighbor's house compare with a trip to Indonesia? <laughs> you don't have to make fun of me, Mr. President. Hey, I'm not. Okay, maybe I'm making fun a little. But the point is, the moon is really close. It's not that hard to get there. Mars is so far away, I can't even pick it out from the rest of the stars. It takes real vision to send visionaries somewhere I can't even visualize. Tomorrow, Captain Hank will be the first human to set foot on another planet. And I'll bet they didn't know about that. Well, this is it. In 12 hours, we'll take it down there. You excited? I am, but it, all this trouble for only 10 hours on the surface, it, it doesn't seem worth it. Yeah. Well, 10 hours, that's the deal on this one. Oh, well, let's make it worth it, Captain. Yeah, let's make sure this thing works first. Good idea. Good captain idea. That's why I'm the captain. Charlie, can you hear us up there? Loud and clear, good buddy. Can you hear me? Affirmative. All right. How about the navigational computer? Did it boot up okay? It's getting there. Okay, I'm showing full levels of fuel and oxygen. You guys might want to manually double check yourselves. I'll check when I inspect the shielding. Why don't you try the remote docking controls? All right, hand her over. Hmm. Hang on a second, guys. I'm seeing something a little strange here. Whoa, that's coming in fast. Guys, harness in. You got four, three, two. Brace yourselves. We've been hit by debris. I told you the new trajectory was dangerous. How's the ship? Are we about to die? Okay, look, the ship I think is okay. We might be about to die. I was able to start off the auto orientation thrusters, so at least we're slowing back into a stable orbit. Oh, well, that's good. But the solar array was folded up by the impact. Oh, well, that's bad. I have a call into mission control. Chef's gonna be on the monitor in a minute. First things first, you've got to turn off all non-essential equipment. You've got very, very limited power with your solar array. And if that goes, y'all die. Thanks for sugarcoating it, Shep. Well, I said if. According to our computer calculations, you have 18 hours of life support left if you keep the lights out. And how does that solve our power problem? Yeah, it doesn't. But it lets you get back home, and that should be some consolation. You say we get home, you mean our dead bodies get home? Technically speaking, uh, yeah. So, technically, we'd be dead? Unless you can figure out a way to fix those panels, you're already technically, actually, in every other way, dead. It bothers me as much as it bothers you, but you knew the risks before you got on board that interplanetary death trap. Yeah, Shep, I'd really prefer if you didn't call our ship an interplanetary death trap, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, Charlie. In times of crisis, I'm prone to hyperbole. <laughs> Okay, um, surely there must be something that we can try and do. Yeah. I appreciate your sense of duty here. I might have misjudged you folks altogether. There might be one thing you can try. All right, let's hear it. You can take the lander. It's got its own battery supply, life support, about three days worth for two people. Uh, Shav, in case you forgot, there are three of us. Yeah, but there's only room for two in that lander. So you might have to draw straws. And? And what? And how does that help us survive? Oh, it doesn't. We'll let you get down to the planet and finish the mission. You can't be serious. Oh, I'm dead serious. Let me give you a little bit of advice. If I was in your shoes, 
I pick the bigger straw. Where's the champagne? I still don't want to die out here. We're not gonna die today. At least you two guys aren't. What are you talking about? Look, I may be the redundant one here, but I do have three specialties that you two guys don't have. First off, I'm expendable. None of us are expendable, Charlie. Come on, Casey. Look, Hank's gotta fly this thing. You're a better astronaut than I'll ever be. I, I didn't mean that... Look, it's true and we all know it, okay? Secondly, spacewalking. I am the best spacewalker alive today, at least before I die out there. But that's irrelevant. We don't even have an EVA suit on board. What's an EVA suit? It's a jetpack I normally use to maneuver through space. You can't spacewalk without an EVA suit. Duh. Well, that's where my third specialty comes in. I'm a hero. Natural born. This bravado is a little more than skin deep. What are you talking about? I'm gonna hold on to the ship. I'll unfold the array myself, manually. Oh, no. Mm-mm. That's crazy. If you let go, there's, there's nothing to bring you back. You, you could die out there. Yeah, probably will, but... By this time tomorrow, we'll all be dead anyway. At least this way, I'll die useful. Right? He's right. Better to die useful than worthless. You sure about this? No, but it's the best option we've got. You really don't have to do this. We can think of something else. Did miss the chance to impress her? I don't think so. All right, Hank. Let's do this. All right. Here goes nothing. actually gonna work, so I don't have a plan to get back in. You're kidding. Hank, do I look like I'm kidding you? How long can you hold your breath? What? I don't know, like a minute? Maybe more? Okay, well... Okay. Turn off your oxygen intake and vent the system into space. Huh? Oh, right. Suffocation. Painless death. That's probably a good call. Thanks, man. No, I mean hold your breath. And use the exhaust vent like a jet. It'll be slow, but it should get you back in here. That's not a bad idea.
Welcome back, hero. Thanks. Ow. Uh, yeah. Nice catch, Hank. Charlie's heroics this week. An appreciation, he got the night off. So we got lucky. In a rare appearance, his colleague on the Minerva, Dr. Casey Cook, is joining us live. Good morning. <laughs> I guess it's morning somewhere. Yes, it is here. <laughs> we don't have long with you here, Casey, so let me just cut to the chase. When your name comes up, our viewers are overwhelmingly dying to know what's it like spending months in space with a hunky astronaut and eccentric billionaire. <laughs> I wish we had either one of those up here, Jewel. Seriously, Casey, we've gotten to know Charlie pretty well, but what's a real live billionaire like? I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. Hank, he paid for this mission after all. What's he like as a captain, as a friend? Give me some gossip. Hank paid for this trip? I, I thought you knew. Let's go to commercial. Hello. My ears feel warm. Have you two been talking about me? Why are we up here? You tell me. Charlie. Why are you here? It's not like anything deep or meaningful. I just... I wasn't a very good pilot. I wasn't a very good operator. I wasn't a very good engineer. But... I guess I've always been a really good astronaut. And let's face it, man, what's the greatest thing an astronaut can do? Go to Mars. Right on. Or at least park the spacecraft while you two go to Mars. And what about you, Miss Dr. Casey Cook? I've, I've been trying to get here since I was 15 years old. I mean, everything I've ever done was for this. So all my schooling, all my jobs, all of it was chasing this dream to come here. and I. I didn't think I'd actually get here. Yeah, well, I'm here because I hated everyone I knew back on what I used to think of as just a big, very round, blue turd called Earth. And I wanted to get as far away as I could, and this was as far away as I could get, at least with today's technology. You don't have to explain yourself to me, man. It's cool, whatever. Yeah, I do, Charlie. I owe you an explanation especially. I made a fortune mining old dumps. I started a company recycling wasted materials that most of us forget about. It's not all it's cracked up to be. So I got depressed. I sunk everything I had into this mission. You don't think NASA could have raised the money this fast. And what I couldn't raise, I talked that TV network into covering. That's why Charlie has to do those ridiculous interviews. We're here, we're on Mars. You're gonna be the first man on Mars, man. No. I'm not. My heart's not in it anymore. What, you're not gonna go to Mars now? Relax, Dr. Cook. 
You two need to suit up. You're going to Mars. I'll just be serving as a relay. Ready? Ready, Ready Captain. Captain. site because there's something out there. Apparently a lot of something. And that something might be alive. I knew it. Seriously guys, be careful. Charlie, can you guys hear me? What do you want, Shep? Great. How was the landing? Yeah, it was a lot better than dying in orbit. Yeah. Good work solving the problem with the solar array. I just needed to nudge y'all a little bit back there. Come on, enough with the chit chat, boys. Let's get our feet dirty. Hold on a minute there, Charlie. Tell Casey you step out there first. What are you talking about, Shep? Come on. She deserves this. Give her this moment. No, sir. Can't do. NASA paid for this mission and they want an American to step on Mars first. That'd be you, son. <laughs> Wait, what was that? I took. <laughs> I thought, I thought Charlie, Hank paid for the mission. Uh, Charlie, what are you Wait, trying? what was that? Yeah, it's just, I might have to hear you better from the ground. Charlie, I know you're making that sound with your mouth. All right, you listen to me for a second, Shep. You're going to shut up because Casey has something very important to tell you. You really want to be known as the guy who drowned out our first words on Mars? Dr. Cook, I believe the world is listening. <sighs> Throughout history, um... Humankind has discovered many new worlds, and most of them already occupied by people and creatures who you didn't really think they needed to be discovered. We haven't always explored these new worlds responsibly and haven't treated our old world that much better either. But with this, with my next step, we're about to open a whole new frontier, and I can't promise that we're going to do everything right this time, but at least we'll try. Congratulations, you two. You're Mars Knots now. You're right, we are. By the way, Shep, I'm still the first man on Mars. Woohoo! God, it's hot. No one told you it's this hot on Mars. It's actually not hot out there. It's 24 degrees below zero. It must be the thermostat in your spacesuit that's malfunctioning. Sorry. Cheap f***ing spacesuit. 
No, it's a cheap f***ing spacesuit. Uh, that's weird. When you say I could have like this popping sound, what's that about? Oh, shit. That's a safety chip they put in our intercom system. I heard about that. What safety chip? They're recording us for posterity, so it protects posterity from words like shit, false b job, asshole, you know. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, posterity is so Uh, yeah, sure. Yo, Shep, can you hear me, man? A little static there, Charlie, but we got you. Hey, can you tell us what this box is all about? What is this thing? Have you hit the coordinates yet? No. Please hold. I'm on hold. Until they come back and tell us that they can't tell us what it is. Mars, not Aren't you still there? Yeah, I'm here. No can do on that information requested. You're gonna have to keep moving until you hit the coordinates. Big surprise, Shep. Thanks a lot. Yep, I knew they wouldn't tell us. But you asked anyway. Yep, I did. Very sweet of you. Well, shucks. You sure you don't want me to help you carry that thing? No, I'm fine. All right, tough guy. <laughs> So it's just the three of us. Mm. Indeed, yes. NASA's still a bit shaken up about the near disaster on the Minerva. So they want us to monitor the, the landing from our satellite. You know, a few more eyes on the backs of the astronauts. Smart, I guess. We may be of some use yet. I'm sorry for the way the art landing went. I still don't understand why he chose a different landing site. It's OK. Short as it was, the mission was still pretty successful. Sorry to interrupt you two, but we're getting a signal from the planet. It's probably just a bounce back from the Minerva. Double check the uh, origin and confirm it's from Mars. Already did. It's originating from the planet and the signature is one of ours. Art's back online! So it wasn't destroyed after all? It's a pretty old ID. I'm checking the archives now. It's impossible. What's impossible? Uh, who, who is it coming from? It's the Beagle 2, sir. I guess I was wrong. <laughs> what do you mean? Now I know why he changed course. Why? He wanted to save us. It's ridiculous. He's just, he's just a machine. Aliens, incredible. I think 
also find that the term is Martian, and technically, since we're on their planet, we're the aliens. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Martians. Right. Let's shoot some Martians. Video. Shoot. That is not actually shoot. That would be bad. It's an advanced communication device, artificial intelligence, capable of learning new languages just by listening to them. Are you saying that there might actually be, like, intelligent talking, like, Martian things up here? Shouldn't we have some protection, Shep? Charlie, are you chicken? No, I'm not chicken. It just seems like you're putting us in a potentially dangerous situation. <laughs> Sounds like you're chicken to me, Charlie. Cancel a mission because you're chicken? No. Negative, sir. Finish your mission. Over and out. All right, we gotta figure out how to open this sucker up. I have no idea what it does. Let's just take it over to the vehicle, too. Come on. Go, go, go. All right. standing in front of right now. How'd you get this number? NASA patched me through, folks. Are you looking at us right now? Only through the beagle. Actually, that's why I'm calling. Could you please put Casey Cook on the handheld? Uh, sure. Honey, it's for you. Casey, can I ask you a favor? Nice, 
long road trip, isn't it? Yeah. I gotta pee. Find a bush or something. You wanna see something cool? Always. Set player out here. <laughs> it did. Circa nineteen eighty seven, baby. Don't move.
Two hundred generations ago, the Babylonians, the Greeks, and the Romans gazed into the heavens and discovered a bright red star with their naked eyes. They bestowed upon this brilliant crimson star the name of their respective gods of war and passion. Thousands of years later, Dutch spectacles gave rise to the first telescopes. Cassini, Galileo, and Huygens gazed not at a featureless red star, but at landscapes of dark and light regions. Percival Lowell even told us tall tales of life up there. We laughed. Hell, we laughed a lot. And we made fun. And we pointed fingers. But we also wanted to believe that Lowell and the people like him were right. And so today, I'm standing here telling you we are not alone.